We are back again for another episode of the Phoenix Film Revival Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Iannacone, and I have with me... Stacey Iannacone. Hello. She's the co-host. You guys know her well. And we also have our special guest... Uh, Greg Berlucci. Greg. Greg. Yes. Yay. And if uh, you guys don't know who Greg is, Greg used to work at Photo Forum here in Phoenix, Arizona. Yep, and seen at many, many photo events. That's how I met you, I think. I think through... I'm assuming uh, a bike ride. Yeah. I think it was a bike ride. I think it was yeah. one of the uh, Phoenix Photo For Cruisers. Cruise yeah, event. which hasn't kind of happened because our friend yeah. went off and started playing pool. And <laughs> 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 yeah, it's funny. He's he's uh, he's the kind of personality he gets into something. Mm -hmm. He gets into it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know? And photography is suddenly dropped off for. For yeah. his competitive pool shooting exactly exactly <laughs> so i think a lot of people do miss the bike rides i know i do the bikes rides were fun not that i was i've sort of with more involvement with the lab we've lost more time for other things so i don't even know if i'd be able to town but they were super yeah. fun and when we were going on them i think it was like pandemic times like that was like the streets were kind of dead like when i first started joining up with the group yes and it was kind of nice to ride around and not be afraid of getting hit by the cars <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of when it started i think and and uh that was the uh the uh damn it's hell getting old sometimes <laughs> uh, festival Pen. of uh, the murals oh, along the yeah, the canal uh, canal front there. Yeah, what did they yeah, call yeah. there was a name they'd get into they did have a name I also do not remember yeah. what the name is oh, yeah. but yeah they have different artists that do different panels on so, people's backyards yeah. like on their yeah. the back of the thing yeah I think that might have been around give or take when I met you guys mm -hmm. yep yeah. and then Judy as well your yeah. wife yeah yeah well, and and I got I, I really love the shot I got of you there sitting on the ground reloading your Roloflex. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's my mo to like yeah. go to the ground because I have like a few photos that I've seen people take of me and I'm on the ground. <laughs> I'm like I don't know how to. I can't load without like being sitting and having everything like laying out. I, I can't like. I'm, yeah. Kudos to people that can load a rolly like standing up. Uh, low angle shots are wonderful too. It's yep. true. It's true. <laughs> As I've gotten old, it's hard to get on. Down on the knees and back <laughs> up again. Yep. Just hang out down there and take pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, with with photographing the dogs all the time, the best shot is when you get down to their level. Yeah, yeah, so, dogs are, know. yeah. And then by the time I get down, he's wandered off to the other side of the yard. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. You got you to work fast. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. We had a... We do our booth, which is that direct positive booth that we do every once in a while. And we do a four by five photo direct positive. It takes a while to set it up. And like even humans are a little tough. And we've had a couple people come with dogs. And I think since this one dog that we shot, we've sent, since asked people to please hold their dog. It's a little easier for us. But we yeah. had one that was like on the ground and Dan had to like get on the ground with the dog. And he was like trying yeah. to focus. And he's like, because he can't have it on the tripod and everything. And we managed to get a pretty cute photo yeah. of that dog. The dog wasn't centered, but it was all right because it, it looked good <laughs> with the, the way it was shot. So it worked out OK. But yeah, That's, it was a little tricky. I was like, oh, yeah, old. dog was a sweetheart, but he wanted to move around and he, he wasn't really interested in getting his picture taken. No, not at but, all. It's like, um, I got a four by five here. Help me here. <laughs> like, yeah. That depth of field is, is a bigger challenge because you, yeah. you have a, a very, very tight depth of field because uh, we're shooting full open. So mm. it's like, just don't move forward. Don't move back where we're good. It's pets got him, pets so. are hard. They don't. I think some pets probably know that they're something's happening and probably stay still because it's, you know, people whipping out phones and everything like that. But generally speaking, children yeah. and uh, pets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, you know, and I'm old school. I, I, I photographed for years with mechanical cameras, mm -hmm. manual equipment. I don't need autofocus. I can do it pretty damn fast. Myself. Yeah. Um, as I get older and the eyes go. Yeah. Now, 
maybe it's not so easy anymore. <laughs> but I zone focus a lot. Yeah. 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 And I always do, especially shooting the dog. I'll just set it to four and a half feet and wait till he's there. There, yeah. Yep. You know, or throw the ball there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I hit quite often on the eyes. That's good. Yeah. I like yeah. that way. As a person, yeah. it's also my eyes are slowly betraying me <laughs> with age. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I like that. Like, yeah. I haven't been able to use range finders at all. Like, I don't have yeah. the eyes for those. Like, I can't. I just, I can't do it. My, yeah. my brain and my eyes are like, mm, mm, mm. I'm not going to put that together. Some are good. Some aren't. Yeah. Uh, I have a uh, an old Agfa Ambi Select. Ambi Slut? Ambi Select. <laughs> S I L E T T E. Okay. Uh, that was their Leica competitor in oh, the 50s. Okay. Oh, interesting. So it was their, their interchangeable lens rangefinder. Yeah. And it has the most glorious viewfinder hmm. and focusing it's... in it. it. It is to rangefinders what, what an Olympus OM1 is to SLRs. Oh, really? I mean, you put it up to your eye and it's, it's bigger than reality. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it's just a large it. field of view that you've got? It, it's a big field of view. It's uh, well beyond the image area. So you can see things coming in and out. Yeah. Uh, the rangefinder spot is brilliant yellow. It jumps right out at you. Oh, hmm. I mean, it's it's a really cool camera. That sounds so really I've got cool. it the next time we're together. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah, because yeah. 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 normally, like, every one I've ever picked up, I'm like, I can't do it. I can't. Yeah. And every time I've taken photos, they're just not there because I can't find it. Yeah, and, and yet you shoot with a twin lens. <laughs> yep, yep. That's uh, much easier yeah. for me. Much, yeah. much, much easier. Yep. yep. Well, dim, dim and backwards, I have... Uh, yeah, you know, like that. <laughs> Dim, I do not like. No, I have a Yushika that I have um, that I got not that long ago. Or no, it was a Rolly. It was actually a Rolly Flex that I found at a estate sale. Mm -hmm. And I can, it's so dark. I was like, I was going to replace the glass in it, but then I was like, that's a lot. And I don't love it. But then I got a, Rashi a Yushika recently and it, the glass is so bright. I'm like, oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Yep. I can handle it backwards. All that I'm okay yep. with, but. I, I got to see what I'm looking at. <laughs> That's for yeah. sure. Well, I think the first time I met Greg was at Photo Forum. And uh, I remember that was back when we were getting the, the dark room going. Um, we've been uh, rocking the, the dark room uh, for Phoenix Film Revival for the past six years now. So I want to say this was at least five years ago. And uh, bought some film from Greg. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I was always there worried about Darkroom, what was going to happen to it as the world became digital. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm not a camera salesman. I never was a camera salesman. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, commercial photographer in Detroit for 35 years before we came out here to practice retirement. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and and uh, I always called Photo Forum my hobby job. Yeah. You know, got me okay. out of the house. Yep. <laughs> someplace to go, something to do, keep me busy. Um, you know, and I, I, towards the end there, I transitioned down to just working a couple of days a week. Yeah. You know, and when, when COVID hit, <laughs> Bye bye. <laughs> I'm done. No more. You didn't no need, need to put, put up with that. I'm yeah, not going to deal with it. That absolutely makes sense. Um, but uh, people would come in. Kids would come in occasionally looking for darkroom gear. And why no? We we hardly sell anything. Here's here's a little shelf with some paper and some chemistry for the schools. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but you want an enlarger? No at least in the entire time that I was there, there was never an enlarger for sale. Yeah. Yeah. But I got the idea to tell people, uh, bring it all in, donate it. The next kid that walks in that's looking for darkroom gear, I say, here, take it home, have fun. Nice. <laughs> you know, just yep. pass it on. Yep. Uh, let that happen. Uh, and, and the owner was not real happy about Chip piling up in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that feeling. <laughs> so uh, it was okay. Give me your name and phone number, and I will pass that on to some kid. Yep. And and uh, that that kind of worked out. Good enough. 
Um, it's become more and more popular. It seems to be getting more and more. There's a real renaissance of film right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know when I was talking to you guys a few months ago, working on a trade for those film oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Said, you Super know, handy. I, I, yeah. I, I've got this little dark room I got set up and I built a little cart so I can roll it in and out of the closet. And now it's time to start making contact sheets of the film that I started shooting again. I, I, I really didn't shoot a roll of film from like 2002 to 2017. Okay. So, were you shooting uh, digital? Always did. It was digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah you were shooting. Digital. I, I was yeah. shooting digital in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As a pro, before you people ever heard of it, <laughs> you know. on the floppy, but, on the floppy instead of the uh, oh no, no, no SD card, direct into the computer. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. my, my first digital camera was a Dicomed, Dicomed scanning back. Oh, okay. So it was basically a four by five film holder with a scanner built into it. Neat. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's best it took two and a half minutes to take a picture. So a studio piece only. Yeah. yeah. And 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 out of the end of this holder uh, is a ten foot long SCSI cable. Jeez. <laughs> So over to uh, a little busy box and, and, and the transferring and getting it out of the computer took maybe another five minutes. Um, 130 megabyte TIFFs. Nice. In, in what, 1994? I mean, it's crazy. You, yeah. you can barely build a computer powerful enough to push these files around. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it, if you shoot a sheet of 8 by 10 ectochrome, um, you then walk over to your lab tech, and 45 minutes later, you can look at the image. Right. Uh, with the die command, eight or nine minutes later, you could look at the image. So it had some advantages. Yeah, uh, absolutely. For, yeah. for certain things. That had to have um, been expensive. Yeah, it was crazy money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the, uh, the early uh, Kodak branded nikons the dcs series cameras okay so i started with the 1.3 megapixel and then the 3 megapixel and those were awful yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's they, a, they that's, really were the, the color was yeah. yeah it was okay and you could do some things with it when they brought the 6 megapixel one out which would have been 98 um that was actually a pretty decent camera hmm. and, yeah. and that was about the time even with the with the lab that we just well okay we invest in a big ink shed yeah <laughs> and, yeah and no more darkroom work yep exactly yeah yeah it started getting and anyway phased out. I, I did get back into analog back into film and uh i traded you guys a, for a 50 sheet box of eight and a half 11 black and white to make contact sheets with yep and started making the contact sheets in about two o'clock in the afternoon I, i'm out of paper <laughs> <laughs> and i'm looking at at not even quite halfway through the pile of oh, negative <laughs> sleeves that i had so i've shot 100 rolls of film in, wow. in, jump in, right back in, in those seven years yeah without even realizing it. yeah yeah that's funny <laughs> when you know how to do it it's yeah. not that yeah. hard to yeah to the, knock through a bunch of rolls i'm i'm happy that you're making contact sheets a lot of people don't i always do it's like a you know do as i preach not as i do kind of yeah. situation a lot of the time in the lab and always you know telling people like you know keep your film in a binder it's really nice to have a contact sheet to go with each one of those and yeah. oh man to remind myself like it's just nice to have that yeah, especially yeah. when i open up my binder i'm like at the house or something and i don't my light table i'm like oh, why didn't i do that <laughs> okay. and, and i've never been in binders no, mm -hmm. no binders. I mean, it, 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 as commercial photography goes versus what hobbyists might do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you, you photograph a job. It goes to press or to whatever day after tomorrow. No one ever looks at it again. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it. It's P yeah. I mean, I did PR kind of stuff. It just goes. And, and advertising kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, 
it, it it's for today. Yep. So just the cut them into strips, throw it into a little glassine envelope and come up with a filing system. Yeah. As long as you keep them organized, I suppose. Yeah. Well, you have to. As, as a business, you have to. Yeah. Uh, when we closed the studio in 2003, um, the, the big decision is what do we do with all these filing cabinets? Hmm. So we called the local university. Um in the library and said, you know, we have a we have an archive of negatives going back to 1920-ish. Oh, goodness. Um, Jeez, that's, that's a while. Uh, well, <laughs> and this was, was all it, commercial it, work? All commercial work. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a lot longer than that. The company was originally, you may have heard of the Detroit Photographic Company. Hmm. Uh, Dave, our other guest that we yeah. had, I uh, think. Uh, the Sharpie, maybe Sharpie Archive. Okay. Uh, hmm. No, the Detroit Photographic company was a really big architectural and whatnot firm uh, started in 1901 wow they really mm. they were um, right at the forefront there yeah they uh, they went bankrupt in the early stages of the depression so around 1930 mm-hmm. uh, somebody bought the archive and it's still being seen today again uh, uh shorpy s-h-o-r-p-y dot org or dot com okay um hmm. is, is show, yeah it's it's a really cool website it's it's hmm. just all old 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 photographs yeah and very nicely scanned and um they, they'll sell copies of the prints but uh the company reorganized under a different name afterwards and, and kept going <laughs> 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 and and that's who I ended up working for all those years. How so, long were you there? So, uh, almost twenty. Okay, and this was Detroit. In Detroit. Okay, were you in originally Detroit. from Detroit? We we came out here in two thousand six. Yeah, I grew up in Detroit. You did okay. I lived in Detroit so until I was in my fifties. Okay, I came out here as about fifty five. Um, called the local university. They said, oh, we'd love to have that. <laughs> I said, okay, come get it. <laughs> um, two, two kids, uh, I shouldn't say kids, they were probably graduate students, uh, came in a van. And I said, oh, no, go back and get a semi. <laughs> <laughs> come answer. here. No, uh, there, were, there were 40 or 50 big filing cabinets yeah. packed full of um, 8 by 10s and 4 by 5s and Fair amount of thirty-five millimeter, but mostly all eight by ten. Oh wow! Which is what you shot commercially yeah. back then. Yeah. You know. uh, you know, we got to take pictures of brake drums for the AC Delco. <laughs> They're going to be reproduced in the catalog, uh, inch by an inch and a half. They make two thousand different brake drums, <laughs> but you have to shoot them in eight by ten. <laughs> oh man. Okay. What did the university do with them? Uh, they are in the Walter Ruther Law Library now, and I don't know if they've ever cataloged them. Yeah. But, I mean, we have yeah. pictures of uh, f- car factories being built, uh, a lot of the downtown skyscrapers being built. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, that's some uh, fascinating work. Pictures inside the various car factories. That's what it was booming there, too. I did too. a lot of, uh, you spent every Wednesday at Great Lakes Steel for years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. your job, so you were in Detroit, so you were born in Detroit, and then has photography always been kind of where you've been at? It sounds like it's gone way back for you. Uh, I was uh, a little kid. <laughs> And fascinated by those cool cameras that parents and uncles and <laughs> friends had, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, had my first darkroom at 12. Oh, wow. Nice. nice. Okay. Um, took over my mom's Argus C3. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I shot through high school with that. I still have it. 
Nice. Put a roll through it a couple of years ago just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> See if it still worked. Yeah. Um, went to uh, Wayne State University in Detroit. Studied photography there. Uh, came out, went to work for Chrysler, like right out of school. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the 1976 recession, uh, Chrysler decided to kill their photo department. So I got mm -hmm. laid off and I went to work for the company that took over that work because you still had to have the stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an outsource company. And, uh, that's who I worked for all those years. <laughs> so Chrysler was probably the, the most work that we did, but a lot of others too. Yeah. You know, all around, just bid on job, bid on job, bid on job. Um, I'm really glad that I had my career back when you could be a photographer mm -hmm. and only a photographer. Yeah. So we had a sales force. We had our directors. <laughs> <laughs> I would come in in the morning, basically get an assignment sheet and go shoot <laughs> and shoot and shoot and shoot. Yeah. Okay. And not have to deliver it and not have to worry about the billing. Yeah. <laughs> not have to worry about collecting. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it seems no, like no, nowadays no. everybody no, has to no. be like an all-in-one. You right. do all of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't take a business class studying <laughs> photography in college. Yeah. I assume that's quite different now. Yeah. You know, I can imagine. Yeah. 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 They have. You have to. We say everybody's hustling themselves. Like you're yeah. a you're a product nowadays. Like you yes, have to be. Right. You have to be a brand. You have mm -hmm. to be like, and you have to like hustle on every end for that stuff. Anyone that I think we know that yeah. does photography in somewhat of a professional way, they are hustling to do that. Yeah. It's hard to make that like an actual profession nowadays in the world that we live in. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, you have to be a video guy. Yeah. You have to be a sound guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, throughout my entire career, if there was video or you know, I've been around long enough, 16 millimeter, <laughs> at a job, it was that other crew. Yeah. And it was yeah. always a crew because you had a, f a photographer, a, a, a filmer, and you had a sound guy. Yeah, you know, carrying a big reel to reel and a, and a, and a boom pole. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a different world. Yeah, I, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad I'm done. I'm glad I got to work when I did where I did. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of fun being the the old guy who knows everything. Uh, <laughs> Get the experience. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm assuming you were shooting your own personal stuff, too, just as much when you were back then working. Well, um, and I, I did a little bit of work on my own for certain ones. You know, the, the company was fine. You could go find your own business. And, you know, uh, and, I, and I took pictures of my kids and my life and everything else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And. Uh, I always like to say that, you know, my Nikons are what I took pictures of my kids with. I never used those commercially because everything was sheet film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. Go big. Go big or go home, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can see it. There's advertising. They want the best that they can get. And that's what the best you could get was yeah, the large. Right. Yeah. So it makes sense that you go big. Yeah. Did you have to process anything when you were doing that? Or were you just the shooting? Uh, I did both. You did both. I mean, did both. I mean, I, I really preferred to walk back and, and load my own into the processor. But we had a couple of film guys that, that just did that. Yeah. Um, we printed massive amounts of prints because that was, that was part of the business was production of PR pieces. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you're shooting a, a, a Chrysler's catalog for the year. Um, now you're going to take three views of every car model and print 3,000 each of those three views, black and white, hmm. 8 by 10 print, caps and stripped into the bottom. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. I think we might have some overlap with another podcast guest that we had, Dave. So David. I, I had heard. He, he worked for. I forget the company, but he worked in Detroit about yeah, the same time here, for, yeah. and it was car stuff Duff. and he oh, did printing. Yeah. Yeah. It there, was sort of crossed there, over. I have to go back and really, uh, ask him about that. With, uh, with, um, Dave Dupree, right? Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. What, I don't remember be, the company. That would be a uh, small world if you guys worked at the same company. No, 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 no but it was definitely in the. It was definitely he, in the same line. For Grossman Nolling or yeah, you know, something. Chibby yeah, or one of those guys. Yeah, but there, I think it was around were, the same time. I yeah, think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, back in the day, there were fifteen or twenty mm-hmm. commercial studios, labs. Yeah. Um, just dedicated to the auto. Mm-hmm. That was a big world there. It's the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really uh, was. Most of them are gone now. Yeah. And and when it went, it went fast. I mean, we went from producing uh, oh, a, a million black and white 8x10 prints in the fall through Christmas, or summer through Christmas, mm-hmm. every year. Hmm. Uh, in the yeah, early mid '90s, the company started wanting color, so it went to slides. So we were duplicating slides, mm-hmm. big animation cameras. Uh, the last Christmas, which would be the auto show season, uh, that we were still doing film. I think we did little over 8 million slide dupes oh, <laughs> over, over a period of a couple of months. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, to stuff into kits, to pass out to uh, journalists at press yeah. conferences. Um, the next year, CDs. <laughs> <laughs> it hopped very fast. It, oh, it, it, it went like that. And, and a year later, we were out of business. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. A 50-person organization uh, went went down to like eight at the end (laughs) and then couldn't keep the place open. Yeah. Um, You build jobs not just for your time, but to build a set, to light that set. To yeah. hire the models, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, then the agencies would come and say, "Just shoot it flat on white," <laughs> <laughs> and so. we'll and we'll do this new Photoshop thing. He said, "Well, we do Photoshop. We know Photoshop. We're Photoshop gods, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, Photoshop three, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it was out, I said." Oh no no no! We we have young freelancers. We pay nothing to for this. Uh, you, you know, uh, you, you, so we couldn't even do that work because yeah. you couldn't bid low enough. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yep. Um, to actually get it, and uh, a lot of places went in with within just a couple of years. That was, so that would have been like early nineties. No, this would be late eighties. Uh, two thousand one to two thousand three. Oh, okay, so we're already. Oh yeah, I guess CDs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to see the industry change so much, and even photography, even digital photography, I think, has changed a lot now. Now with the AI and everything coming out, it's even more so. Well, it'll be the next thing to keep you from being able to make a dime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, and I, I keep complaining about AI. I'm like, you know, the robots were supposed to like give us freedom to like do these creative things. It was not, you know, they're supposed to do the, <laughs> the, the menial jobs. crappy jobs, uh, and right. they're taking they're, they're taking, mean, why, they're taking why, the why creative am I still jobs. Doing laundry and washing dishes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they yeah. took the wrong jobs. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. I don't know, but I think that's probably why there's such a hard swing for people coming back into things like film, because people want to have that tangible stuff again. They want to have like the whole in your hand. The creativeness. They want that back. I think people are seriously losing out on it. Especially kids now that like they haven't grown up with it. And they they just they live in this weird digital world that like everything just exists as like a concept. (laughs) Right. (laughs) right. It's gotta be 
Yeah, yeah. I can see the, the yearning for it. Humans want to create. Humans want to make things. Humans want to use their hands. <laughs> like, so I see exactly well, why a lot of people well, are kind of pushing back toward that. Craft is is going to stay. Mm -hmm. It's it's just going to be a hobby. It's not going yeah. to be a business. Yeah, yeah you know, making money. We always say that, like making yeah. money in anything photography, especially film photography, is like, whew, that's a hustle, hustle, hustle. I know hustle. we, we yeah. have a business and we're business i use the word lightly with business but yeah. <laughs> if we keep the doors well, open pays for itself, if it pays like... for itself that's we're happy with that yeah. because yeah. that's the best right. we can ask for and, and and where is the money in photography yeah. today uh, where so. it's always been uh we had a saying back in detroit wedding photographers drive cadillacs <laughs> yeah. commercial photographers drive pickup trucks Yep. <laughs> and fine art photographers walk. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. yeah. It's it's definitely changed um quite a bit. I mean it's well, in in a sense that's still the same. Um but even then the the market's so saturated with wedding photographers that and people aren't getting married nowadays. They just <laughs> <laughs> so I know the wedding there's so many there so many of yeah. those with so few people. Yeah, we got married and we had like nobody. We we just happened to have Tanisa show up at our wedding and took photos because we got married in Vegas and we're yeah. like, if someone comes, yeah. they can come, but we're not, you know, like we're not making anyone show up. We're getting married in the street in Vegas. Yeah. And our friend Tanisa she just showed up and we're like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, Nisa. And she took photos. Otherwise, we would have had like yeah. literally no photos. Well, we had maybe a handful from the photographer who was also the officiant of the, of the wedding. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> and which wasn't that great. I think they were shooting with a potato camera. I don't know. It wasn't, I was like, well, no, it was not. To, if you're yeah. shooting digital, you know, I'm not. I was glad Tanisa yeah. was there. Elf, Elvis with yeah. his banana camera. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, a lot of people aren't getting married in people's budgets for things like, you know, photography. When you get like professional photos of your family, things like that's a splurge. That's not like an everyday thing. That's something that and nowadays, yeah. like everybody with a phone is just like, oh, I'll take a photo with my phone. Well, we take millions and millions and millions and millions of pictures. Yeah. I mean, people appreciate <laughs> photography, but to pay for it and yeah. get a professional to do it for you is a very, very different thing. Yeah. Yeah. And the photography today, photos today are for the moment. They're mm -hmm. not for archive. Yeah, yeah. which I you don't know, like. You, I don't like that you, part at next all. Next time you drop your phone in the toilet, you lose all your pictures. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, or or you can be like like this nice living room I'm sitting in now, where there's no floor and, and wall space left, <laughs> <laughs> covered with pictures, pictures and framed. Yeah. Um, yep. And and my house is like that as well. Yeah. Um, How much more can you do? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now, now I fill portfolio cases, and <laughs> you know, yeah. When I yeah. when I go to one of the club functions or any of the photo functions around town, I I usually bring a uh, portfolio book of whatever I've been working on lately. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And and I hope that if nothing else, that's for the kids. Yeah. Because they're going to see somebody who's got an album of hopefully fine photography. And yep. it's going to want to make them print a few of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're always yeah. pushing that to people. Yeah. We're like, please print your work. See the difference. Yeah. You'll see it. You'll know it. As soon as you do it, you'll print it. And and not those stinking little amateur four by sixes. <laughs> <laughs> not the little if, guys. If, if you're using yeah. less than an 11 by 14 sheet of paper, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Go yep. big or go home. Yep. You know, yeah. Yeah. People definitely um, shouldn't be. We've yeah, been yeah. pushing. We have a, our, we're doing our first zine for the, um, we're calling it a zine, but it's going to be hardbound. So more of a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going all out. We're going to go hardbound. On we're going one. hardbound for the first one. Yeah. And we're having people because we really want, and a lot of these kids, like they've never seen their stuff printed and they've never seen it that way. So we're like, no, see it together as like a group of photographers and everybody's work and all printed out. Like you'll see it so much differently. And that doesn't even mean like we're always pushing, obviously darkroom printing. Cause that, you know, I tell people yeah, a yeah. scan versus a darkroom print, very, very different. But yeah. even if you're digitally printing and scanning and like, you know, if long as you're just printing it out in some fashion to see it and yeah, it's just so much different. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're constantly, yeah. constantly pushing that narrative all the time. Well, a fine photographic print is, is something special. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, uh, 
it takes a few years to get good enough in the darkroom and learn your technique and, yep. and to, to make a print that glows. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, when I was in college, uh, Ansel was big. Yep. This was the period where he was well-known photographer. Um, he had a show at the 831 Gallery in, in Birmingham. And I lived just a couple of blocks from there. Would wander over in the afternoon after school or something and just bask in the glory of Half Dome Moon <laughs> in 16 <laughs> by 20 in front of me. Um, mm -hmm. And I always wanted to be that good a printer. Yeah. And 30 years later, I finally got to be that good a printer. Nice. And the world changed to digital. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I'm a pretty hot shot digital guy, Photoshop guy. And, yeah. and uh, But I rely on somebody else to make my prints. Yeah. 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 But having those darkroom skills, that's still a still value there yeah, for sure. Yeah. That takes like, I think that people underestimate that a little bit, how much work that is with in the darkroom. I mean, I haven't been darkroom printing for super long. It's only been four years or whatever it's been. Yeah. So not super duper long. Yeah. And every time I do it, I'm like, God, there's so much. Like it's you. <laughs> there's such a curve there. I mean, I just finally started understanding split filtering properly, like not all that long ago. <laughs> and it's yeah. just like and that stuff know, takes such a while. But when you see it done right and it, you do it, you're it's like, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it really yeah. is. Like because I, you can. It's amazing how one negative can look so many different ways mm -hmm. when you darkroom print. I love that it can just yeah. be like the mood can be changed completely and just yeah, yeah it's so cool. There's no undo button. <laughs> no undo button. I like the the, I no, love there's, there's a yeah. redo button. <laughs> yep. Redo, exactly. Start over. I like uh, the work that it takes. Yeah, I like that yeah. it takes a lot of work yeah. to get something. It just, it feels that much more valuable yeah. at the end. And, and if you're having fun in there, it's not just repetition. Yeah. And it's not boringly standing in front of yeah, no. anything. Um, it's interesting that you say split contrast mm -hmm. because... That's really a very modern conception. Yeah. Um, nobody did split. Mm -hmm. We had graded papers and everything, right? You used graded papers. You could use Kali contrast. It makes mm -hmm. perfectly wonderful prints. And, uh, as an aside, I, I do laugh, laugh at people who back in the day would jump up and down and you know i use nothing but double weight fine art paper and i wash it for 17 hours and, <laughs> uh, and all of the prints that i have on fine paper are noticeably deteriorated now oh really and the mm. stuff that i have on poly contrast rc all still looks wonderful oh so, interesting. so tell me oh. all about archival yeah <laughs> it proved me wrong yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting one of the things uh, that i preach with a few people because a lot of people like want to jump right into fiber, fiber print yeah. yeah and i have to remind them that it's not just a hassle to do all all the work that goes into creating the print but if you're not archiving it properly and doing the chemical process that's needed to tone it and and yeah. make it archival, then yeah. you're taking all that time, that money, that energy, and you're throwing it in the garbage. Well, yeah. you know, who's going to care in 30 years anyway? I mean, yeah. you know, when I die, the, the closet that's packed full of giant boxes full of Kodak 16 by 20 and 24 boxes full of prints is going to get thrown away by my kids, grandkids. Tell the, Judy we and, want we and, want them. And, we'll put and, them up. We'll and, put them in the lab. And, and the great grandbaby that's coming next week. Oh, oh. next uh, week! Oh my goodness! Congrats! Yeah. <laughs> so, oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh, great! Yeah. You said great, 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 great. No, great, 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 great grandbaby. grandbaby. That's still one. that's yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, well, we'll we'll take them. We'll put yeah. them up. Don't throw them no, away. Don't send them our way. We appreciate it. Anytime we <laughs> yeah, run yeah. into like darkroom prints, I'm like, ooh, like we've been slowly adding in the lab and then yeah. here in, in the yeah. home, like we do it. Yeah. yeah. And I again, I, I don't print. have enough wall space to, to, uh, to go through this. Stuff. <laughs> I know you run out. We have a very small home, so we have a hard time. I'm like, we need a bigger house just so I have more wall space. Like, <laughs> just one more up. <laughs> Stacy's like, guess what I found? I'm like, yeah. what's coming down? <laughs> you know, Going in the place. It's, it's the argument against buying a house with a great room. Yeah. <laughs> the open concept does not go along with 80 mounted 
large prints. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, you, you have yeah, to have the right room for you, it. You need an old house with lots of rooms and lots of walls. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. And you need an old Victorian. Yep. It yeah. would suit it with yeah. big old photos. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. So you set up a dark room at home and you said you said you had your first dark room at 12? Yes. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Was that, I'm assuming that wasn't a common thing, like a 12. No, actually, uh, I, I got it uh, used from a neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy down the street who, who you know, had, had gotten himself into darkroom. And like everybody else, six months later, it was gathering dust. And then two years <laughs> after that, his wife said, uh, put it in the box. And five years after that, his wife said, get rid of it. And, yeah. You know, a kid down the street, um, you know, I think the... the I don't remember. It was next to nothing for it. Yes. I know yeah. my first SLR was a neighbor, my Miranda. Yeah. Uh, outfit was 70 bucks. It was uh, five bucks a week for nice. or five bucks a month. I'm sorry, for 14 months <laughs> nice. to pay him back off for it. Yeah. Do you remember your first darkroom print? Uh, I still recall? have my first darkroom. Nice. Actually, my, bro my brother has it. Oh, okay. Now. Love it. Um, which was a picture of my dad uh, uh, in front of the garage holding up a couple of bass coming home from fishing. <laughs> and uh, when when uh, I was back in Detroit last fall, uh, and Tom pulled that picture out, and I said, did you notice it's flopped? <laughs> I had printed it backwards. Common. Yeah. 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 Uh, he said, no, I didn't even... Well, now that I look at it, <laughs> you know, everything in the garage is on the wrong side. <laughs> Nothing to give away. There's no text or anything. Yeah, no, yeah. Kind of subtle, no. subtle. <laughs> uh, outside of he's holding the you know the the, the creel of fish up in his uh, right hand or his left hand instead of his right hand. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yep. yeah. Nice. Very common for a first print. Yeah, so that's a very yep. very. Not only. But yeah, I, I used to used to ride my bike up to Woodward Avenue where there were three or four camera shops. Three or four. And, uh, you yeah, know, <laughs> just in a couple of miles. Um, little quart cans of Dectol and D76. Nice, nice. We have a couple of those in the lab. Yeah. Um, 25 sheet, five by seven packs of luminous paper. Mom would make me cut wow. them in half. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to make big prints. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cost too much, yeah. smaller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. It does get yep. pricey. Now, on the price, like obviously inflation and everything, but in comparative money, like was the cost kind of what it is now? Yes. Like was it still yeah, kind I mean, of it like about. It is really expensive. And, yeah. You know, uh, uh, learning photography was probably a lot more difficult than, than it is today because you couldn't just go shoot, 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 shoot. I mean, I'm, I'm really jealous of. of kids today that, that oh, yeah you can go out with a digital camera and blast a thousand pictures yeah maybe only one of them's good but you 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 have that screen on the back of the camera to give you instant feedback yeah and uh i i like to talk in, in in a lot of my classes and my talks to the to the clubs about working a scene you you take a picture you think about it for a minute you, you you move a foot to the right, maybe snap another one. Uh, let's bracket two steps forward. Yeah, keep yeah. working. I mean, back back in the day in the studio, we'd have Polaroid, or you just learn to get it right on the first try. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, he has to say but, the learning but, curve. But, yeah, but, but I don't work a scene anymore. I didn't work a scene since I got my first DSLR. Because I've got that screen. Okay. Yeah. I, I take a shot. I go, hmm. <laughs> two thirds of a stop under exposure, two steps forward, uh, lean slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Click. I'm done. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't need to take that time. So photography is a lot less expensive today than it once was. Hmm. Just because. Yeah, just in that respect. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Darkroom work, you know, even even with the popularity of film over the last few years, as it's really made a comeback, the prices keep going up mm -hmm. because that comeback is only with the you know those of us in the cult. <laughs> <laughs> True. You drink the Kool Aid. Right? Yep. Yeah. The yeah. the the fixer. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the fixer. You yeah. took the fixer. It's the fixer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Addictive. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what a, a 50 sheet 11 by 14 box of black and white RC paper is 120 bucks. Mm-hmm. Give or take, yeah. 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 <clears throat> So darkroom makes you think. <laughs> yeah. It does. Yeah. It. Now, yeah. when I, when I got back into it, I said I, I'm I'm not going to spend a lot of time fooling around. Uh, full frame, ten by fifteen from thirty five millimeter on eleven by fourteen paper. Or yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, eight by twelve. Yeah. On on, on eleven by fourteen paper. Uh, digital, I do uh, 10 by 15 on 12 by 18. Okay. Uh, square, you know, give it an inch or two around. Yeah. With the, with the 120 stuff. Uh, that's a fun little topic to talk about, too, is is shooting square. Yeah. <laughs> you you shoot a roll flex. Yep, same. Yeah, I love square. I've got a roll flex as well. Yeah, yeah I'm a big fan yeah. of square. Yeah. Um, I keep... This thing in square format. My phone, phone is square. So when you look at my Instagram stuff, anything mm-hmm. you see, if, if it's color and it's square, it's a phone picture. Yeah. Because <laughs> I never put color film in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You like square format? I, I, I like the way you have to think mm-hmm. to shoot that. Um, and for all the talk of... You know the golden mean, and which no camera has ever actually been <laughs> in terms of format, or that weirdly extra long thirty-five millimeter thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, thirty-five I have millimeters a, yeah. odd. Three two by it three is, is, yeah. is a really weird <clears throat> format to try to fit stuff into. Yeah, absolutely. You know, which is why people make eight by ten prints, even yeah. though they're supposed to be eight by twelve. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and square gives you so many more options. Yeah. yeah. I always say that as well. I tell people, um, and it's such, such a strange thing. I hear so many people complain about uh, square format, but I'm like, well, you have, you have a square. I mean, technically every camera that you shoot, shoots a circle, you're just masking it. Mm-hmm. So if you think yeah. about it, a square is as close as you get to a circle. Right. Yeah. And then from there, it's a matter of how you want to, how do you want, I mean, you, any photo that you can take, if you have your content in there, you can go vertical, you can go horizontal, right. and you can frame it up uh, as long as it falls within those bounds, yeah. um, however works yeah. out the best for you. <clears throat> yeah, and the only time I ever take the phone away from square, I'll go to 16 by 9 when I want something weirdly wide. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I love square too. Anytime I shoot nights, it's probably my complaint. I almost never shoot 35. And when I do, I'm a little grumpy about it. And I'm mm-hmm. like, and I think it's just the format. I just don't love that ratio. Mm-hmm. I really don't. It always feels like it's it's just going too far over. And I'm like, there feel, there's just extra there I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's probably why. Well, I'm I like to fill it. I mean, I, I, I enjoy 35 because, because of its weirdness. Yeah, I, I dislike it because of its weirdness <laughs> and all the, the love hate relationship. I like its convenience. Yeah. If I want to yeah. like take something, you know, <clears throat> yeah. quick, yeah. not have to worry about it, changing the role, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of shots. Then thirty five comes out. I want something. It's it's always a convenience choice for me mm-hmm. to do the thirty five. But otherwise, if I have my choice, I'm going square. Yeah, but I do. I I still do more digital than film. Yeah, no matter. Yeah. Um, my my craziness with that is that I don't shoot any modern lenses. Okay. So uh, my Sony A7, I've, I've never autofocused because I've got an adapter to fit old Nikon glass, old Minolta glass, old Pentax glass. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, yep. and I still use that. And, uh, you know, that wonderful little programmable button on the back that I tap to have it zoom in so I can see to focus. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. or or to use any of the other minor tools that we have for that for manual focusing makes life really easy sony's viewfinders are not wonderful yeah i yeah. mean to, to my old eyes you know they're, they're they're 
resolution is not very good. They're a little dim. They're a little small, even for full frame cameras. Yeah. 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 I just got a Nikon uh, Z72, and that's a full frame, and that thing is just uh, shooting digital um, after 17 years of not having a digital camera and finally getting a new one. I'm like, wow, that has changed significantly. <laughs> <laughs> like, just tre- tremendous. And I know I've kind of watched it, but then I moved back to film and stayed with film for quite a while because for me, it was affordable. But, yeah, the the tech has changed. And that zoom in uh, when you go to take a picture is just, this is this is nice. Even if I'm in focus, I'm like, you know, I'm going to check it. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then I'm like, oh, that is sharp. Okay, click. <laughs> having Having that digital viewfinder is wonderful. Oh, yeah. Pre-chimping. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like that whole struggle. You don't, you don't know if you got it or not. That's why I like. Yeah. I think that's yeah. why I like film. I like I like. Stacey that. likes to gamble. <laughs> I love to gamble. I, that's it. I'm, I'm a gambler at heart. So I'm like, yep. yeah, you know what? Because yep. when I do get it, I feel like, yeah. Yep. I just, that whole, just take a ton of photos and pick the good one out of the big pile you've got. Like, I don't know. That just doesn't appeal to me, I guess. So. Huh. Right. Well, I I don't spray and pray. I, I don't no, you shoot a thousand very, pictures. To you seem very calculated. Uh, yeah, I've yeah. seen you shooting, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Just be prepared. Uh, wait for the moment, and get it. <laughs> you know? And and if you're going to be if if you were a successful professional photographer back in in my days when I was doing that. That's what you did. Yeah. You know, you, you didn't spray and pray. Nobody did. Nobody did who, was, who was making money or was making a career out of it. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 I always really admired the old guys when I was young coming up, uh, especially the guys that shot sports. Mm. Um, I don't remember the guy's name, but who used to shoot for the Detroit Red Wings. And uh, before the game started, he would go out on the ice with his big ladder and would screw in two humongous flash bulbs into his reflectors, which were up above the glass on one side of the rink. And sometime during the first period, flash. <laughs> <laughs> First intermission, while the Zamboni's out there, he came back out yes, with his ladder again. Jeez. Oh my God. Screwed in a sounds, couple of new sounds ones. Sounds very risky here. You know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sometime during the second period, there, when a goal was being scored, there was a pop <laughs> and a flash. <laughs> and uh, then he went home. He didn't hang around for the third period because he had to go back and he had know, his, developed so it that it would, his, it'd make the bulldog edition in the morning. His two yeah, photos. His two photos. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. so he just yeah. waited and he's like, he knew when it was there. And that was it. That Did was it. it. Crazy to get it right uh, the first time, yeah. right? Skill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is skill. It's crazy to have to go out there and change the bulbs, though. I mean, that's what you had to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I noticed that when I went to uh, sports, uh, I think it was basketball, and I didn't realize it. Somebody had mentioned it to me that there's strobes that are up because y- yeah. you notice that they're taking these sports photos. Some of the photographers that are out there, I guess probably one or two maybe, were out shooting and yeah. they would shoot and trigger the strobes that were way up uh, yeah. up in the rafters. Usually that's reserved for the the uh, major press Team. or magazine guys. So, yeah. so when the Sports Illustrated guys are in town, yeah, they're they're using the strobes. The, the local photographer or local yeah. papers photographer is generally just shooting natural light. That yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing to see those go off. I'm like, oh, who's who's out there shooting? Which one? Which one of you guys? <laughs> 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 who's using the lights? <laughs> nice. Yeah. It makes me wonder, like, if you have a I guess it could go either way. So if you have an easier time shooting digital because you have the film background. And I wonder if people that have a film back or a digital background have an easier time going to film. I wonder which one's more advanced. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, to me, it was just a natural transition because the world's going digital. Yeah. You know, um, Photography is photography. It, that doesn't change. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it, fundamentally it, it, the same it, thing. It's not, it's, yeah. Uh, 
it's it's really just in the back end. Mm -hmm. um, I think the hard part for somebody who's just digital to go to film is is the lack of the screen on the back of the camera. Yeah, <laughs> of not knowing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't have that immediate yeah. um, understanding of I change this. This is the <clears throat> result I get. Yeah, and then yeah. it's now a matter of memory when you get that role developed, and you're looking at your film photos, going, "Well, what did I do?" Mm -hmm. you know, so there's, you know, the <laughs> ADHD much, yeah. uh, personality that everybody tends to have nowadays is that you know uh, you need that focus just quick enough. So I feel like digital makes it a little easier, but then you have you, you have you lack the attention span to to properly make these connections so and also like why would you, you throw it on auto why mm -hmm. to learn why do i need to learn it if i can just keep doing it this way and just pick the one that i you know instead yeah right. yeah um we all wanted these <laughs> yep yeah <laughs> yeah path, path of least little, resistance there's yeah. little shortcuts yeah now, i think the the biggest thing that i really see in the difference of, of film uh today versus yesterday is how much looser everyone is with it. Mm -hmm. um, trying to do serious photography with point and shoot cameras. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, it's normalized now. Yeah. Uh, the 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 first frame thing. Ha oh yeah. Where people, yeah, the where half. Do that <laughs> shoot that half yep. shoot up frame. I mean, I never would have ever shown one of those to somebody yeah <laughs> never <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah well yeah. that's not a picture but now it's a thing um and and you know letting a, a looser aesthetic go to your photography and over the last couple of years especially since I've, I've been out of the camera store and just shooting um i'm i'm a very much perfectionist photographer everything is straight everything is level everything is just so parts have to flow properly and it, it comes to me quick 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 yeah but uh, i'm allowing myself to be sloppy to be loose uh, i put some stuff up on instagram yesterday okay with a little samsung point and clicky camera and they're not one of them's level, <laughs> but but I, I I don't think they were looking through it. <laughs> you have this fuzzy edge; you can't tell anything. Yeah, it, it it bears only slight resemblance to what's in the photograph. And uh, I put them out there full frame. Uh, there's there's little things in the corner that I normally would have moved out, but I couldn't see him and and i'm trying to be happy with this i'm trying to let myself go looser yeah yeah you embrace know? it yeah. yeah and and i think if you, if you take a deep dive into my instagram account you may see that over the last couple of years yeah just <clears> that there's stuff in there today that you would not have seen three years ago or five years ago or ten years ago. yeah 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 yeah, that's one of the things we've said is there's a trend with photography and especially with film that, uh, which Stacy says it's, it's meant to look good. Film was never meant to look the way it really looks today. Um, <laughs> and we, we didn't have digital and now we have this weird uh, dichotomy of digital and analog or digital and film. And, you know, people let film be whatever it is. It's its own creature own thing yeah, yeah. with a lot of the the younger crowd i would say 35 and younger yeah. um are kind of shooting that that aesthetic and going well if i want it to be perfect i'll just shoot digital yeah. if i wanted that specific yeah. feel right, right. yeah but then yeah. again there's times where it's like well why don't i don't know i guess there's different uh different groups for for yeah it's film. interesting it's just i get worried about the kids that don't know that it's not supposed to look bad like so instagram you see a lot of stuff become trends through Instagram. So mm -hmm. people see like, you know, there's digital <clears throat> filters that you can put on your photos that are supposed to be film fil filters, but they're like scratches and dust and stuff. I'm like, that was just a bad negative, not clean. <laughs> but it becomes, to the kids that have never seen film photography, yeah. they think that's what it 
was because they don't know what it was. Well, so they don't some of these trends that they see, it's because they think that's what it's supposed to look like. Yes. So well, it's opened also, it up they're that also way. Also looking mm -hmm. at old photographs yeah. that have faded. Yep. True. Um that 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 really flat reddish color. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, well that's what old photographs look like. Well, but they didn't look like that when they were new photographs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It was it was a different thing. And you know, you think about digital as a color medium, not a black and white medium. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, uh, black and white, you go in the dark room, you you make a glorious print. Uh you're never going to get that that depth, that that illusion of 3D uh out of an inkjet. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Color, on the other hand, why would you want to shoot film? <laughs> but color is is way better, way more accurate, way cleaner, way cleaner, way easier yeah. than it was yeah. back in film days. Yeah. Um, I I I don't shoot color film except for grossly old. <laughs> <laughs> expired Heat fog expired <laughs> yeah. nasty stuff I, i'm there with which, you which yeah. i wish i put i put in my half frame camera all the time yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but if i were I, I i wouldn't shoot a roll of any of the modern films i i have no use for them i'll shoot digital yeah yeah well, maybe if yeah kodachrome still existed and you Kodachrome. could do sebachrome yeah. prints yeah, thanks mm -hmm. no. no you go ahead yeah. I, I, I was <laughs> never a kodachrome shooter no okay well, i'm an ectochrome guy all right fair enough fair little enough. little different look i think i think uh, uh ectochrome was far more accurate to reality yeah yeah that makes sense kodachrome yeah. was not the colors of life kodachrome was the colors of kodachrome it the, was a right. look it was a manipulated look to get the red and the green were a little yeah off reality yeah. yes yeah. they yeah. looked amazing yeah. the, i love the, the, deep, the so deep reds good. Yeah. and the blue greens yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yep. yeah um but as a commercial photographer i mean she had ectochrome or, or fujichrome uh, yeah. depending on that makes uh, sense more accurate yeah. yeah totally see that um plus the fact that kodachrome was just that stupidly difficult hideously nasty environmentally <laughs> awful <laughs> process <laughs> yeah yep. well the was epa took care of that so. yeah. thank you I'm, I'm actually i'm actually glad it's gone now what's my dog's name that's true coda kodachrome yeah yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, plug here, I guess, for my uh, my Instagram account. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if anybody wants to take a deep dive, I want to talk about deep dives. Yeah. Um, I'm off photo, A W E P H O T O, like awesome photographer or awful photographer, whatever you want. <laughs> um, that's my main account. Uh, but I keep three others. Uh, the Kodachrome Dog okay. um, is, is my dog's account. We take pictures of him. He's very uh, cute. And, and, and I kind of write the captions first person for him. <laughs> um, Black Cat Jasper. Black Cat Dot Jasper is my cat. <laughs> uh, if you go to those accounts, it's really interesting to see that uh, Coda has 60 followers and Jasper has 900. <laughs> you know, Somebody's loved they, a little more. They, well, cat, well, cat, it's cat cats. Yeah. It's cats. cats people the internet cats. is all about cats, isn't it? The internet's yeah. very catty. Yeah. 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 And, and my old Volkswagen camper is the fourth account, uh, Ruby of the Westie. Nice. Yeah. So it's our, our you know, kind of camping and hiking and whatever account. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, deep dives. Yeah. When I find a new photographer or, or on Instagram, uh, I like to go look at their stuff. And... I'll, I'll, I'll like pictures and you know, I might like the third one that they took. And then I take my hand and I go flip, 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 flip four or five times. And I look at a couple more and then I go flip, 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 flip a couple of times. <laughs> and I look at a couple more and I might, well, okay, this one's cool. I'll like this one. 
And by the time I've gone through their entire archive of 3,000 pictures, I've got maybe a dozen likes that I've given them, and okay, I'm going to follow. <clears throat> Invariably, when somebody gets this, the next day, they're following me, and they've liked my six most recent pictures. Yep. Nobody takes a deep dive. No. We don't look at what picture you took two years ago. We're interested in the immediacy. Remember I said earlier that, that digitalism is a medium of today. It's also, not a medium of tomorrow. I also feel like people don't want to be a, feel like they're stalking you. Oh, I, I don't know. I, nobody's ever <laughs> called me a stalker for doing this. You know? Like, but, why, why are they looking and, at my photo from eight years ago? <laughs> and, and, good, and, and, they really are deep and, diving and, and me. When, when, I, when I comment on a picture they took eight years ago. Yeah. So it's a really cool light here. You did a wonderful job. Blah, blah, blah. Never anything bad. So, yeah, I, I call them deep dives. Yeah. 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 No, it's good. Yeah. Every once in a while, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I recommend everybody sure. out there who's listening, start doing this. Yeah, yeah I, <laughs> you, I like it to see people's progression, too. Yeah, it's yeah. really fun to see, like, how someone started and then, like, what they ended up kind of, the journey that they've gone on if they have yeah. an Instagram. Oh. I'm bad at interacting on Instagram, so. Yeah. Well, it, 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 like it, it usually people. goes from phone camera stuff to to digital Mm -hmm. DSLR, you know, then they start doing the border like I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, to get away from Instagram square. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. trends, yeah. trends of the time. Yeah. See how people kind of guide through, guide themselves through that. I think uh, one of my first posts on my personal account was had some sort of ridiculous filter on the on the background yeah Insta the instagram were, had a lot of filters yeah i think my yeah, first yeah. one was pretty filtery as well what it was all about back then um yeah i i didn't get on instagram when it first started i was actually and i say i'm not a video guy i was really into vine do you remember vine i do remember vine yeah yep. yeah two second videos yeah <laughs> yeah quick yeah um and then Instagram came in and it was, it was my, my daughters, you know, were showing me their lunch every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, really, yeah. A lot of people used it for that for some reason. Like yeah. food became like really, really, really popular. Early yeah. on. Yeah. And when Vine went away, I said, okay, well, I guess I'm over on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Um, today I'm, I'm trying to concentrate more on Vero. If you're okay. no. familiar with it, I'm not. Uh, v E R O, Vero Social. Uh, okay. I think much bigger in Europe than it is here. Um, it's more like Instagram in the old days. Uh, there's no Hopefully. influencers, there's no advertising, there's no oh, okay. we're searching your pictures. It's just. It's that. less algorithm-y. Yes, no algorithm. Nice. Uh, That's nice. Um, music, television, it's not just photography, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a really, really good group of people on there. Oh. <clears throat> and I'm yeah. enjoying it. Uh, unfortunately, it is a paid thing because it doesn't they have all the advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I heard about that uh, maybe a couple, maybe one or two years ago, um, picking back up again and, and the interest kind of picking up. But yeah. I think with Instagram being as big as it is, it hasn't really taken over here in the U.S. So, no, no, it hasn't. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I said, because it's paid. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, that it that slows it down do a little bit too. too. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was lucky I was one of the first million. So apparently I'm grandfathered in free forever. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a there was an app a few years ago, just black and white called in film called mm. Granary. Oh, I yeah. saw that one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They, they never did actually get it to the stage of being an app. Yeah. That was like they just yeah. started something and they had a lot of kind of hype yeah, around yeah, it and yeah, then it yeah, just didn't turn into yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard because uh, you got to like you want to share and get ever like a lot of people to yeah, get it to work. Right. 
and I, I got on it right away and, and did some stuff and some teaching point stuff. And, yeah. and the developers contacted me and said, hey, we really like it. Can you keep doing this? And, you know, I went, okay, cool. And uh, 25 prints into it, all of a sudden the screen went, neep, 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 neep. you've reached your limit. Now you have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, of course. Well, and, and they contacted me and asked me to put things on here, do teaching points. Hmm. Okay, that's the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> I gave up on that one pretty quick. But I still have never seen an app come out for it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's still just a website. Yeah. Web -based thing. yeah. I remember uh, MySpace used to have a thing where if you bought, I don't know if it was like cereal or something like that, you bought some sort of product, you could get free photos to put up on your, on your MySpace page. <laughs> and you had like a certain amount of photos that you could share sure. on your MySpace sure. page, it's crazy. Um, which I, I just kind of go back to and think, wow, that was yeah. That was different back then. You had to pick your photos that you sh shared right. with everyone. You had to, you had to curate your own photos. You couldn't just blast them on That's Instagram. That's right, because you had you had <laughs> free five kilobytes of space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. it was different. Yeah. That's yep. for sure. That data is just ramped up uh, as time has gone on. Yeah, it's kind of oh, unlimited yeah. at this point. Right. Do you have your own website, or you just keep it on the socials? Uh, I own offphoto.com. I have never done anything with it. Okay. Um, I did for. A while, uh, put stuff up on Smug Mug. Oh yeah, Smug Mug. I had Smug Mug forever. I finally yeah. disconnected from that. Yeah, and, and it's been like ten years since I've added anything, and, and it went from yeah. being fifteen dollars a year to seventy dollars a year. It went up really quick. Jeez. Yeah, I think yeah. that's when I got off. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I was on there for years. And uh, I, I keep thinking about going to Flickr just to to have something but no yeah. I, mean, I mean people look on the phone instagram is fine yeah 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 a lot of people don't even uh, have like i've heard uh, like I, a lot of people are switching they don't even have lap laptops or anything anymore it's just straight up phones people are working off of now because everything's sort of getting to that point, point. Yeah. where you don't need to have anything yeah. else yeah well, my uh my macbook pro is now 13 years old <laughs> it barely functions <laughs> um uh, I don't have a good raw converter for the Sony camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so I, I need to buy a new one. I've been, I've been kind of just squirreling cash away for the last year. <clears throat> and uh, Judy keeps telling me, no, just, just get the iPad Pro. Yeah. You know, you've got a big, nice monitor. You can plug into that if you want to. With the iPad. It's a bad. I still have to have a computer. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw somebody post up uh, the other day, which is the most ridiculous thing. And I've actually thought about doing it. They have a MacBook, um, or not MacBook, but a Mac mini computer, yeah. desktop computer. Mm -hmm. They took a uh, iPad and they connected it to the Mac mini. And then they have a power inverter to power the Mac mini, which is meant to be a desktop computer. Yeah. And they built a frame to make it look like a desktop computer, like an old school Mac. <laughs> and they basically used the iPad as a monitor. And then they had a wireless keyboard and a mouse. And I'm like, yeah. as opposed to using just like buying a, a laptop, they use the iPad and a, a <laughs> Mac mini. Um, but I was like, oh, man, I would totally buy one of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. well, <laughs> Seems like a fun setup. Yeah. Judy went with the iPad Pro uh, a few years ago. She's got the keyboard. She yep. no longer has a PC. Yeah, I'm still yeah. rocking the PC. Yeah, I'm like I'm just stubborn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, no. again, for Photoshop, for, for for pushing big files around, having more processing, more memory is is good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> and yeah. a big monitor to work on, and, and a good mouse, and a and a pen pad. Yeah. Uh, I just bought a, a ridiculous device. Um, it basically has like these, it's like a fidget spinner kind of is, is the closest thing I could spin it, uh, it compared it to, but it has all these different knobs and buttons on, on it. It's called a tour box and um, it works with all the Adobe products, but it makes it so much easier to edit uh, video, edit audio, uh, edit yeah. photos. You can roll through. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's been my fun. It looks uh, like a little tiny thing. DJ thing or something. Yeah, I want to like, you know, 
scratch on it like you would a, a <laughs> Dan loves a, a little a little <laughs> gadget whenever the yeah. like the mail comes and I see a box yeah. I'm like oh what little gadgets in there <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. well the the pen tablet is is really yeah. I, I really I use that a lot in Photoshop and that's another thing because it's that's now no longer supported yep <laughs> yeah yep. so I'm back to a mouse and yeah I was <clears throat> bummed when my bamboo uh yeah pad stopped working after i updated my computer i'm like what i use this to do all my editing it was it was so good now it's yeah back to your mouse yeah Yeah, i don't but i don't know stuff updates too quick say i'm I'm so old school my stuff i've been buying the same mouse that was like it's like a trackball mouse that was available like 30 years ago or something and i still like when it go i buy them off ebay like and people rebuild them because i won't i refuse to give up my mouse so i'm like i just have like i keep buying like the same one that it hasn't what, been manufactured what works forever for you you know that, that, that yeah. muscle memory is important that's exactly right <laughs> yeah i love that because i don't have to move my hand i just move my thumb that's all i have to move and mm-hmm. it's like perfectly just holds my whole hand i haven't been able to find like a replacement for it. i'm like nope i'm just gonna keep buying yeah. these rebuilt ones off of ebay for the rest of my <laughs> life <laughs> I, yep. I shun technology i guess technology just goes so fast you can't keep up with it even if you wanted to it just just everything so just too quick i just yeah. <laughs> well, it was too expensive too you, you, way too expensive yeah to keep up some people are like that as soon as a new phone comes out they're like i'm getting the new phone i'm like does it really do that much more than the phone you have like to make it worth it like i just i can't just yeah, yeah i just I, I, I keep until the batteries die I'm, yeah I'm that's exactly state. it yeah, yeah. By the time I update my phone, it's like many, many phones between like, <laughs> yeah, and it's usually yeah. the battery. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. Oh. Well, and cameras, I, I don't worry about anymore. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Once, once we hit 16, I said, God, I don't need anymore. <laughs> and making billboards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say I use mine for reproduction work and I did a piece yeah. not too long ago. And yeah. I mean, outside of that, I can't see there being a need to be any higher resolution i mean you're basically capturing well you know coming close to capturing reality when your resolution's um up that high you know it's like okay well what's just throw a 50 mil lens on there and then boom you just zoom in on whatever spot in the image that you want drop to your heart's content (laughs) yeah Yeah, and and i 24 megapixel full frame what i shoot now with sony a7 ii is is kind of my camera choice still and i i won't give it up because i the, the only thing that's improved since that is autofocus speed and i don't yeah. use autofocus <laughs> so yeah it means nothing to me yeah the only thing i dislike about the camera is it eats batteries you know yeah i mean the, the older sony's I, I don't get 50 or 60 shots and i've got to change oh goodness yeah. that's yeah. that's pretty quick that's their upsell yeah. on yeah. on getting you to get a a I hand grip and a tiny bit. No. extra batteries <laughs> no. a hand grip that takes two batteries <laughs> <laughs> um, you're talking to a guy who pulled a cart basically for <laughs> 30 years. I like a small camera. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. Um, yeah. Technology. Yeah. Schlepping an eight by ten into a steel mill is no fun. <laughs> yeah, that absolutely yeah. seems. Yeah. yeah, we're actually going to take a tour of a steel a steel mill in a couple weeks. Yep. We're taking a vacation um, and we're going to New York, but then we're going through Pennsylvania and we're okay. ending the trip in Pittsburgh. In Pitt- and in Pittsburgh, yeah. there's a steel mill there that you yeah. can take tours of. Yeah. So I was like, that would be amazing to take photos in there. I've yeah. never, I mean, I grew up in Pennsylvania, so we had steel mill- mills everywhere. Yeah. And I've always seen the outside. They always look kind of neat, but I was like, oh, and you I smelled wanna... them. You saw them at night. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like for sure. But I've never actually been in, in one. one. So yeah. I'm actually kind of excited if we do that, we may go on that tour. Yeah. get some photos of inside one so but i'm, yeah. I'm not gonna have a large Lots I'll, have, of I'll have my rolly humongous <laughs> grimy things yes exactly yeah, yeah. yeah everything's yeah. Just, that's our jam yeah, yeah very 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 grimy yeah. but very quintessential pennsylvania <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure detroit as well very yeah. very very northeast <laughs> we'll make sure to bring some acros too yeah. for that yeah. yeah get some contrasty shots yeah. there you go there you go add nice. to the add to it mm-hmm. yep yeah, I, I got a lot of family around uh, Youngstown and Sharon. Okay, yeah. So yeah, absolutely, they, right they, there on the border. They all worked on the mill. All worked in the mills. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, yep. Yeah. Yep. It was a very, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people. Yeah. Yep. Steel was a thing for sure. Absolutely. But yeah, I've been to Pittsburgh in a little while, so be nice. Dan's never been, so he gets to see Pittsburgh for the first <laughs> yep. time as well. 
Andy Warhol Museum. Don't miss it. Okay. Yep, yep. Right. Andy Warhol's right. from there. We're going to yep. go see uh, the Fred the, Rogers, the, like the, where the, he's buried the and all that. It's a very cool place. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pittsburgh's actually really great for the arts. I just tell people that Pittsburgh's got a lot of art yeah. things to it. It's very up and coming, too, as far as like a lot of artists have moved there because it's like just the affordability of it. Mm-hmm. So just, you know, God knows lot, how long that old, is. Lots of old hold. industrial buildings you can use cheap. Yep. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot of space available. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the hotel we're staying in is like a old Votech high school or college or something. I'm like, that tracks. <laughs> like, it definitely tracks. Yeah. So, Greg, what advice would you give to photographers now like these kids kids are getting into maybe film kids are getting into dark room like what would your advice be like oh, with all the experience that you have don't don't listen to us old people no don't <laughs> do your thing do your thing <laughs> do your thing embrace it um, yeah <laughs> yep um no i there's 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 a, a, a whole university of of knowledge out there um <clears throat> There's different schools, schools of thought, design schools. I mean, you know, I, I follow the movements that that I came up with and that impressed me when I was young. Um, you have to do the same, but you you have to you have to learn. You have to see what else is out there, uh, not just your own thing. Uh, the only thing that I really rant about today um, is street photography. Hmm. If you're going to shoot street, show me faces. I'm so tired of looking at the backs of people. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that advice you know, a lot, actually. Uh, yeah. uh, if, you're, if you're shooting street, you're shooting it for that. Why are you not putting faces into the picture? Yeah. Are you afraid? Well, then you shouldn't be out there shooting street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 that's, that's about the only thing I can say that I, yeah, I, I, somebody needs to be held up and slapped a couple of times and given his buckets. <laughs> <laughs> get into sure. it or get it's, out of it. it. Yeah. yeah. And, and the people and, make street photography. Yeah. 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 And, and get closer. Um, you can never be too close. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you get guys that, that, that were my heroes as photographers when I was coming up um, were, were, were like that. You know, don't be intimate. Yeah. There's a story there to tell. Don't confuse me <laughs> with everything else that's around it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that advice. I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> and I think if you, if you go to my, Instagram, especially, and look at it. A lot of stuff is tight. It's it's, it's oh, telephoto yeah. lenses. It's Absolutely. macro. Yeah. It's, it's you know I'm I'm right in there. <laughs> yeah, you're great with light and texture for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. Streets tough. Streets very tough. Streets really tough here in Phoenix. Um, of all places, we just it's too damn hot. It's too hot. <laughs> Way too hot, and not enough people on the street. <clears throat> So yeah. it makes it very, very, very tricky. There's other places where it's it's plentiful and it feels, you know, yeah. like we're going to be in New York. In New York, it's like it's plentiful. But at the same yeah. time, it's weird when I'm in New York, I don't feel like shooting, yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> odd. Yeah. Phoenix is, doing. is very much like Detroit. It's a, a the downtown is commuter. Mm-hmm. Uh, not enough people live there for things to really be happening all the time. Yeah. And it's getting better as, as, as all these old high-rise apartments come up. Uh, but go to Scottsdale. Yeah. Yeah. You got to go places where you people know, are. Go, yeah. go to Prescott. Go to Tlacopaki. Hang around there. That's a really cool place to shoot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> go to Flag. Yeah. yeah. Flag has a great downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hang out on uh, 4th Avenue in Tucson. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always places. <laughs> yep. 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 So, I tell you, go hang in Sunny Slope. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sunny Slope. So I like Sunny Slope a lot. It's up and coming. Um, you know, we, we, we came out here originally. We, we took a vacation out here and then decided it was time and moved. So we rented an apartment on the Internet. 
ended up at 7th Street and Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Drove around a lot. <clears throat> Finally settled in Sunny Slope. It's, it's perfect. It's close enough to downtown. Uh, it's yeah. close to the expressways. It's walkable. Uh, I live right on the edge of the preserve, so I, we can. I, nice. I can go up North Mountain from my house. Yeah. Um, nice. Um, character. It has a lot of character. It, it has Sunny character. Slope. It and, really and, does. And you know, everybody when we moved here, people were you know, I mean, it's Sunny Slope. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> and and it, it really isn't. It isn't. No. <laughs> no every no, time it's, I hear it's, it's working class. <laughs> yeah, it's working class. Every time I hear that, and people yeah. are like, "Oh, Sunny Slope's dangerous." And every time I've been in Sunny Slope, I don't feel that at all. I'm like, Sunny no, Slope is no, not. It's a friendly a, little community. Yeah, yeah. I never get the vibe that it's like this horrible place to be. I'm like, no. So this is kind of got character, and like, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, definitely but, more but dangerous neighborhoods the, in Phoenix. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the whole the whole metropolitan area here in Phoenix is is radically different than Detroit. Yeah. Uh, because in Detroit you have Detroit, and then you have the Burbs. Yeah. You know, and 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 they're two different worlds, and the two never really. Yep. yep. Mesh. Yep. Yep. You know, there's there's there's, you know, it's it's almost as bad as the South was in the fifties. Um, and it's not gotten wonderful yet there. Um, here you got you got good blocks and bad blocks. Yeah, it's, it's all a mix. Yep, there's, there's everything's not, on there's top not, of each other. There's not yeah. square miles that you shouldn't be in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Yeah. Except for maybe so, Maryville, but <laughs> I knew that comment was going to come. Or Sunny Slope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we kid, we it. kid. We, go all, over, we yeah. go all over the valley and it really is like that. You can be in one spot where you're perfectly fine and then another spot you're like, well, I'm not so sure about this. Like yeah. we, we see that yeah. at the lab. The lab's on Grand Avenue. Mm -hmm. There's parts of Grand Avenue that are perfectly acceptable and then you take a turn and Sketchy. you're like, I need to turn around real quick. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah it's just kind of how it is. Yeah, it's one of those cities that everything's just sort of together philly's a little bit like that so i've lived in philly for a little bit and philly has like you have good blocks and then bad blocks they happen incredibly quick between yeah. each other yeah and yeah. not cordoned off so much yep yeah so that's how it goes but sunny slope's good mm -hmm. I, I i don't know what other advice i <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm good on teaching you things, but advising you, no, go go play, go, <laughs> go play. play. That's good That's advice. Fun. That's good advice you know. on its own, though, just to tell people. Yeah. It's, I, give yourself permission to just shoot stuff. So. You don't have to have perfect stuff. Just shoot stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. I think a lot of people get stuck <laughs> on that. They like they won't. They don't want to do it unless it's perfect. They don't want to shoot unless they have the perfect environment to do so. Like shoot what's right there, yeah, what's yeah. available. It's almost like the camera, the, the best camera is the one you have. Like it's the same kind of same, advice, right. you know? Yeah. One of my closing points in my, in my basic photo classes that I taught over at the store, you know, your, your introduction to your, your new Nikon or your introduction to your new Canon or is, is, I don't care, leave it in auto. Here's, here's what this button does. You're going to forget that in five minutes. You, if you get into it, you get into it. Go home tonight and take 40 pictures of the lamp next to the chair while you're watching television tonight and try to make 40 different pictures of that lamp. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn more from that than you are anything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. I, I mean, I, I like I, that. I, I, you know, one of the, the most salient things that I learned in college was, was f probably first year class. Um, and the professor takes us outside. Uh, he's got a bottle of wine in a glass, sets them down on a rock. Okay, take pictures. And every person after the other walked up to the same spot and took the same picture. <laughs> I kind of hung back. Think about this for a minute. So when my turn came up, I... I Unscrewed the cap, <laughs> poured some of the wine into the glass, <laughs> turned it around because the light coming through the back of it was so much cooler than the light yep. on the label from the front side. And that's kind of the way I've treated my personal photography ever since. Now, I got a hard lesson the day I started as a professional photographer working at Chrysler when they said, don't be creative. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's got to be weird. You're coming from. Do not be creative. <laughs> <laughs> you got to surf. <laughs> this is engineering photography. Yeah. You know, you're taking pictures of a, of a door handle that's just been cycled 25,000 times. Show the wear. Yep. Don't make it look sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make it look pretty. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know. Um, and, and I always had to keep those two things separate of my professional work versus my personal work. <laughs> yeah, that's the very different kinds of shooting. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. But no, that's definitely the first example there. That's definitely a photographer's way of seeing things, like okay. where you're like, well, how am I going to get this different? And then I, that's one of my favorite parts of photo walks is actually after the photo walk to see what people have shot. Right. Because I'm like, I want to mm -hmm. see how everybody saw this walk because I know it's going to be different than how I saw this walk. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love yeah, seeing like yeah. the different angles. And some people are just so good at it where you're like, how did they see that? I yeah. totally missed that. Like, and they, they see something and they're like, wow, okay. You're, you're detail oriented or you're not. It's, yeah, it's, exactly. You know, and I don't know how to teach that to somebody just, just to, to try to plant a seed and let them figure it out themselves. Yeah, and hope they kind of explore it a little bit more. Yeah. But I think yeah. that's what makes some people more naturally kind of better you can be proficient in understanding your camera mm -hmm. but having that eye for what looks good you know, that's a whole different thing yeah. it's, it's a hard thing to teach i'm yeah. sure I, I i remember i some photographic educator many many years ago this probably goes back a couple of decades and it was real popular for a couple of weeks <laughs> really around the turn of the millennium of uh, go out in your yard uh, draw like a square yard and photograph everything you can find in your lawn in that as an exercise. Yeah. And a lot of people were doing it and coming up with some interesting things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it forces you to right. look I for mean, the just, different. Just, yeah. I'm just looking at a little piece of grass here. What am I going to do? <laughs> 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 yeah. What can I do creatively with it? Think outside the box. Mm -hmm. It had its moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Shoot what shoot what's there. I always I'm always reminded of that when I look at um, old photos. Because um, when you look at older photos that are interesting, it, it's just everyday life stuff that's mm -hmm. interesting. It's just like some the time part. I I bring this up a lot too. Time brings makes photos interesting a lot of the time yeah. so just but every there's, day there's stuff. so so few interesting photos out there i mean most yeah. of it is is deadpan expressions staring at the camera yeah yeah you know head in the middle of the frame yep watch the sky <laughs> oh i hate that that's one of my photography let's talk about the photography pet peeves for a moment yeah I hate that. Whenever there's like, a, like a third of the frame is the person, and the rest of it is it's, uh, the sky. Why? Why? <laughs> um, Somebody didn't learn the rule of thirds. <laughs> with my mom and her sisters, before they all passed, and there was a picture in uh, the kitchen of the home they grew up in, and. You know, picture of my grandmother sitting at the table, but it was yeah, she's she's like down here in the middle, and and it's just the shelves. Yeah, you know, they didn't have cabinets, and um, and 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 I'm I'm sitting here. Oh, that's just a terrible picture. But the conversation started with, "Isn't that the bowl that she used to make polenta?" Nice. Nice. And and the rest of the evening was <laughs> wonderful listening to this all all this reminiscing. Yeah, growing up in this house and her cooking and, and everything else, and all I was concerned about was you know, it's not a nice composition. <laughs> <laughs> but that, so sometimes but that bowl, uh, that, we'll teach you more. That you know? bowl is important. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. the bowl is important. But if you're on a sunny day with blue nothing in the background sky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to see the rest of the person, please. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, nice. Greg, it's been wonderful having you on. This has been your first podcast, which yes. we, we get yeah, a lot of first timers you. on here. You know, I've, I've had a lot of first recently. Yeah. <laughs> and also, 
That's good. First grand, great grandbaby coming. It's wonderful. Yeah, um, congrats. Uh, first advertising gig is mm. as a model. Nice. Yeah, nice. <laughs> with uh, with Danny. And I'm, oh, pla- nice. I'm plastered on bus stops all over town now. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, you mentioned that. Nice. Yeah. nice. <laughs> we just had him in. We literally, yeah, like, what was yeah. that, a week ago or something? Yeah. We had Danny in. Yep. Yep. Nice. Yeah, call me. Said, well, we're looking for a, 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 an active older gentleman. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. This, like, this I am an active up. older gentleman. <laughs> I just want to you know, be on the other side of the camera. For so you're on the actual side of the buses? Uh, I'm, or the I'm, trains? I'm, I'm, I'm on the stations, and I you're think I'm, I'm in the trains. Nice. nice. Yeah, we got to go yeah, look. I'm, I'm showing up the new, up. their new copper card, and I'm going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. um, nice. Super yeah, like said, the new we're gonna we're I gonna put I, we're gonna put that in your description too. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, photographer I, slash model. <laughs> I had never modeled before except as a hand model for myself when I had to have somebody holding something. Oh yeah, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yep. you know, hire a model for that. <laughs> you, know, you know, show somebody holding the hammer. Okay, click. <laughs> <laughs> Like Raffi, we're going to see on all the billboards. I know, everywhere. right? You're going to get oh, as popular as Raffi. Oh, no, I'm not going to be as popular as Raffi. Sure. <laughs> it'd be hard to it'd be hard to be as popular yeah, as Raffi. Yeah, There's yeah. too many. Sponsored by Raffi. <laughs> <laughs> Raffi, if you're looking for a new advertising, um, yeah. we will totally advertise yeah. our podcast with you. <laughs> we'll do that. We support you, Raffi. If you're listening, <laughs> right. we know you are. You're everywhere. We'll you're omnipresent. Su- we'll let him support you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit yeah. yeah well thank you greg for being yeah. on did, appreciate did, you chatting. did you get enough time was i long was i interesting enough <laughs> very interesting oh, i love the yeah. history i love someone that's been in it for as long as you have just mm. kind of yeah yeah it's really really fascinating really old enough to have started with flash bulbs yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good it's wow. pretty good what about flash powder not quite that no all right never dealt with it we gotta bring, we gotta bring that back <laughs> yeah we joke about doing in our booth with that, but then we're like, well, <laughs> that's a little dangerous. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a lot Just of fun, though. I don't know what the organizers would think about it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and one thing, if you want a tip. Yeah, I, sure. I carry a little a little flat LED screen around with me all the time now. Uh, I don't I don't carry a flash, but it sure is handy having that little rechargeable LED. I can just hold it in my hand and. Light photograph stuff up. something, light stuff up. And it's it's much more powerful than the than the flashlight on the phone. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's good. It, that's that a, is handy. It's like uh, the most important piece of kit. You know, I was thinking about that earlier. Someone asked me, you know, what's the most important thing in your bag? Many many years ago, and I said, well, roll a gaff. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, to, no to, joke. Yeah. <laughs> I go through so much. <laughs> yeah. Today, it's it's a little LED light, a, a small but powerful. Yeah, light's important. Yeah, yeah. so it makes the photo. Photography's all about light. It definitely is. And, no joke. You know, again, go to my Instagram and what does it say? You know, playing with light. Yeah. So that's my heading. <laughs> yep, yep, that's absolutely true. And you got all those. You have uh, the Kodachrome dog black hat dot jasper yeah. all photo and ruby the westy ruby of the west ruby of the westy even better even better yeah. yep oh, yep this is uh, westphalia in the west that's pretty good <laughs> not bad <laughs> yeah. well awesome thank you greg for being on well thanks for having me i mean i really appreciate it i uh fun time it's always fun chat, <laughs> chat and film. Talking yeah. about cameras. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Love it. That's what we're about. Uh, all right. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.